Hi. Right. Good morning, everybody. Today, I would like to present my research, which involves uh, modeling plasticity in CMOS neuromorphic circuits. So before I explain what plasticity is, let me give a brief overview of what my research is all about. We take biological neurons and uh, surrounding cells, and we identify key computational elements, which commonly we know are synapses, which are combination points where neurons connect with each other, which are believed to be uh, locations where memory is stored and a lot of computation takes place. Then there are other parts of the neuron, for example, the axon hillock, which is believed to provide the spiking properties, that neurons spike to communicate with each other. So different spiking properties are believed to, to be the source of communication information in biological neurons. So what we do is we study the biological properties. These are not mathematical neural networks. These are biomimetic networks. They mimic biology at a very granular level in terms of the way neurotransmitters affect receptors along those lines. And then we also look at a new type of cell. We were one of the first groups to model an astrocyte. These are sort of uh, watchdogs over neurons, which communicate that in case neurons are talking to each other a lot, they would excite them for a while, so encourage them. But in case they cross their limits, then bring them down as well. And also, we've built a carbon nanotube synapse to show uh, exploration in different technologies apart from CMOS. Now, we have different synapses. You need synapses that support each other, but you also need synapses to tell them, OK, you know what? The answer is wrong. So that way, we have inhibitory synapses. And that happens in biology as well. So what is plasticity? Plasticity is the property with which these neurons change their properties with time. Nothing is static. We all know that. Otherwise, there would be no learning. There would be no adaptation. So all these pieces that we have here in our library, they need to be tunable. We should be able to tune them autonomously and with external control. Hence, my thesis explores that in these circuits, if we place transistors at the right spots, then we have tunable knobs across the gates of those transistors where we can weigh, vary key properties. For example, for tunability, we have spike timing dependent plasticity. That is, if one neuron helps another neuron fire, their bond gets strengthened. But it's not that if you help him two days later, he's going to get strengthened. So there's a window in which you can help. And in my circuits, you can actually vary that window. Hence, that's the first aspect of plasticity there. Second, uh, we have varied the tunability of our, uh, the axon hillock, whereas we can vary the spiking frequency, as shown. But also, I can vary the number of spikes. Thalamic neurons in the brain, when they do not have an input for a long time, they fire with a very small frequency. But the minute they receive an input, everything wakes up. That's how they draw attention in your brain. Everything needs to start firing. So that's bursting. And also, a part of this building this library is they should be plug and play. You, if you need to build a new neuron, that doesn't mean you go back to the drawing board always. So for example, if I take my excitatory synapse and I build an astrocyte circuit, I plug them together, I get more responsive neurons in my network. If I take my excitatory synapse and plug in an STDP circuit, I get neurons with memory. So the library has to be plug and play. That's another aspect of my research. So the question is, why do all of this? We would want to make more intelligent prosthetic devices. I'm not saying that we would interface with, uh, with biology. That's already a good, that's an established area of research. We want to make our prosthetic devices think more. We want to combine the power of analog, neurons, uh, analog circuits with mainstream computer processors. We have a patent pending on how we can do branch prediction using some of our learning concepts that we have. And with this library, as I defined, we could probably build CAT tools for neuromorphic networks when this field matures a little more. Thank you.